Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to ACEWARE's new features demonstration. We're glad you're with us today to see the many new features and enhancements that have been added to Student Manager and ACEWEB. Chuck, Matthew, Jason, and Stein are here with me today, and they'll be showing you the latest and greatest software updates. And you see on the screen what the most current versions are in Student Manager on version 86. And in ACEWEB 3 and 4, you're on version 57. And they'll be going over those features today. As I turn things over to Matthew, I want to remind you that this session is being recorded. Tomorrow, you'll get the recording delivered direct, right to your email. We know a lot of you like to download the newest Student Manager demo from aceware.com, and then you can rewatch and play the recording and pause at will to try things out before putting the newest version in your live data. Ask questions or leave comments in the chat box and I can get those answered and it will get to a pre presenter to answer those for you. And with that, I'm going to shoot things over to you, Matthew, and you can let us know what you've been busy doing since January in Student Manager. Well, the first thing Chuck wanted me to share, um, uh, since I didn't have an April Fool's joke, um, I took off a little early yesterday and ended up uh, catching uh, this big guy yesterday out at the lake. So this is my 19-inch striped bass, weighed in at 3.46 pounds. So I was pretty happy and had fun catching it. And, had a little one that I also threw back, but uh, wife also caught a fish, so we had fun last night. Enjoyed seeing the pink supermoon from the lake, so that was also fun. So uh, anyway, so let's get into the serious stuff. Uh, and this is, uh, since this is the first time we've done an update webinar, this is actually going to cover um, or update webinar since January. This is actually going to cover three builds, um, Student Manager 84, 85, and this one that I'm running now is 86. So we'll go through first on 84, and we got a couple of things. Actually, a um, couple of these are mixed in with other things. So come on, Student Manager to me okay so a couple things on the person locator f5 and the first one that was in 84 was the uh, member number so if i just search member number and this is contains so one two three brings up teresa alexander if i bring that back up and do four five six because i'm real inventive and made her member number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, she also comes up with doing a search for four, five, six. Now this next one, and I should show you first, uh, I've got my NM code two encrypted, and actually I'm using it to do, well, I guess my sudo socials, so I can relabel it social. Um, now if I go back to F5, this SSN, I couldn't do a contains because of the encryption. Um, so it is a begins with. And again, I'm not too inventive. So one, two, three. And actually, I want to show this field. So I'm going to show the NM code two field in my search results. And I hit OK. So you can see it's still encrypted uh, as it does its search. So it's not unencrypting it as it searches. It is actually encrypting the the one, two, three value, and then searching for it in the database. And Jason Allen is the only person that has a, a social that begins with one, two, three. Um, so there's a couple things there. And next thing is in a report. And this is in names with registrations. I'm going to modify. Default report. Oh, of course, number beginning should be fine. Let's do 20. Doo -doo. Blow this up. And 
and move this out of the way. Okay, so if I look at the data environment, the new thing, uh, new thing is down in the R's, right here, RG credit. We had we've had CEUs and hours in here for you know ever. So the only thing missing was having RG credit in here uh, native to the uh, the cursor. So that is now native, and you can use it on your reports. Or if you're exporting the data, you can you can see it in the export automatically without having to do uh, uh, just do it. So um, all right, next is. F2. Ah, F2. My function keys are weird on my laptop, which is where I'm running from. And so I keep forgetting that I have to do something different in order to actually bring up the function uh, windows. So anyway, F2. The new thing is the order by, there's the add date in the list so that you can do. Um, Oh, let's just do 60 days. So I make sure to get some stuff and say OK. And voila, it should be in begin date or uh, add date order, not begin date, add date. Is add date in here? Nope. Anyway, somebody needed it in add date order rather than begin date order. So uh, we've got that available. Okay, attend. For those of you that are doing attendance tracking, um, we've got Letterman. And this is also a function key, so if I remember to use this. F11 from the name screen or from uh, the registration screen brings up the attendance tracker. If you do it from the registration screen, it just does it for that one course. But um, if you don't, if you leave the first date blank and go through today, it shows you everything leading up to today. So I'm going to say OK. The new thing is this code code field in here uh, to show, you know, like the no shows. Uh, so these others that have zeros, probably they nobody has gone in and actually put in those attendance, uh, but the ones that show no-show definitely has been entered and, and this person is a no-show on those. So uh, that way people can see at a glance uh, this stuff going on. Okay, next thing is with one of the data cleanups and this applies to the code areas. And in here, new thing is membership codes. So we hadn't had the ability to do the membership code cleanup from here. Uh, thank you, Brittany from Auburn for pointing that out to us. And now it is in, in here for you to clean up your membership codes. Okay, export to file. Um, I'm going to do a quick export to file, default report, uh, course number begins with, sure, 20, and that doesn't matter, I, yeah, begin date, co-course. Okay, so if I switch this down here to XLS and export, fine, the tests, Save. XLSX takes a little bit more time. Also, I could have used a memo field, but um, anyway, important thing is I did an export. Okay, so now if I come back in here, the new thing, the new thing, because that's all been old hat. That we've had that ability for a while now. So, but the new thing is it remembered since I did the export this last time in XLSX format, it's automatically defaulting this dropdown to XLSX for this export. Um, so that way I can 
I can keep doing exports and I'm going to close this because I really don't need it. But anyway, um, so yeah, now it remembers your choice in between runs and that way it sa hopefully saves you one extra click because people are just always switching um, down there anyway. So, so now we can save you a click. Okay, done a little little bit new, um, kind of reorganizing here of uh, password maintenance. Not really reorganizing, but kind of color coding. And what we realized is power level has been a, you know, just kind of confusing thing for quite a while. So we decided to color code it. So now you can see it's green, Names, register, pay, course, and structure, and report system are what make up the power level. The lowest of those goes into that. And we used to have pocket ledger in here, but we've taken that out. So you do not have to set a pocket ledger level. Um, for existing users, if you are wanting this to be recalculated, you have to come in here and change something for it to recalculate the power level because you know with the math on doing this it became a little cumbersome uh, and plus trying to figure out okay did it already recalculate or am i having to recalculate over and over and over again ad nauseum so yeah it's not automatically recalculated but if you come in here and make a change it will recalculate for you um, the power level. So you can see AJ is a six, Bob is a one. Well, he's got several names and register at a one, course at a one. So yeah, you can see the power level is tied to the minimum of those fields. All right, name combine tool. The new thing with it is, so back into data cleanup, by names. Oh, let's do an email address. Uh, sure, preview combine. Yeah, I've made a backup. So at this point, if it used to be you'd have to deselect all and say done if you're like, oh, no, I didn't mean to do this, but we've added this abandon button just to make it absolutely clear that nothing's going to get happened. Nothing's going to get done when you click abandon. So say no to that because it's doing the uh, the skip routine after that. But um, so yeah, minor minor little adjustment there in the routine. Just just an extra option really. Um oh, tattletale. Um let me launch another one. Okay, let's see. I've got Chuck in the demo. Okay, so if I want to, uh, when you did a show users, you can do control U or go to tools, show users. Uh, the new thing is the last login. So if you've got somebody that's been sitting here for days, and logged in continuously, you can see that. So this is kind of tattletelling on them that, hey, they're not shutting down student manager at the end of the day. They're just continuously staying logged in. And that's kind of a no-no, especially when you're trying to do things like update or do a, a data cleanup um, where you need people out. Do a backup. You need to have people out when you're backing up. So, uh, yeah, we're kind of tattling on them, but uh, at the same time, this is necessary information that they need to know or that you need to know. Uh, Sharon, how are we doing on questions? Doing fine. Continue on. Doing fine. Great. Okay, next one is a couple of things on email status import. Uh, it's tools, import, export. 
email status. So if you're using a third party like Constant Contact, MailChimp or whatever to do your email address sending, well, your marketing uh, emails, which you probably should be using. Uh, a couple of the things that we've got uh, in here is now we can bring in an XLS file back into the system if you're importing in okay these are the bad email addresses let's uh, do something about those and one of the new options is mark as do not email and blacklist that email address so if you've got some someone that has said hey i do not ever want to hear from you again you're going to want to select this option so that's uh that's now available uh matthew let me can i jump in sure this is chuck uh, one of the things you know as you're trying to communicate with your participants when you can't you face to face uh, you're doing probably a lot more of this if you haven't figured out this uh, email address status update this is a great tool to try to sync what's going on with student manager data with what's going on on your email distribution list because you've got unsubscribes and you've got you know opt-outs and you've got people you might want to tag in student manager to do follow-up tracking this tool allows you to do that and again the a former only format that it used to take was CSV, and now um, it can do either, thanks Matthew, either CSV or Excel. So I just want to uh, make a plug for this if you haven't discovered it or started thinking how you could use it to keep, do a better job of managing your names and manager. So that's it. Great. Okay, next thing on my list. Instructor, um, whatever. Uh, so tools, instructor reminders, email, email instructor reminders, and I don't know what I've got in this demo. Let's do 0408 through 0608, 60 days. So that should get us something. All right, so we've got these instructors teaching classes. Um, the uh, email, so if I hit done, ah, email location contact. So if you also want to copy the, the uh, location, the person uh in the location record as the contact person uh you can do that now and for if you don't know what i'm talking about let me go show you that uh helps if i hit the right drop down find location and the location contact is right up here so this is your email address for that contact or well you want the location email you can Put their name in here and then put their email here so it will it will uh pull this email address uh from this field to to do when you're doing those uh instructor reminders that way that the person taking care of the room can also be reminded to have it set up okay um okay and i knew i was forgetting something with that instructor reminders email or instructor reminders let me go back here real quick 0608 okay new thing as on this screen is coordinator and the, uh, two new things minimum minimum of the class and the coordinator so if you've got a course minimum of 10 and you've got zero enrolled that class that class isn't going to run so you're going to uncheck that person to get a reminder because you're probably going to be canceling that course and telling them so so that way you can tell them um down the road hey this is canceled so 
Um, let me deselect all just to get out of here. Okay. Number of seats. Okay, so what we were finding is, uh, do I have, nope, I don't. Let me just make a quick change, add it at Reggie's. Um, that's fine. Actually, let's ungroup. Let me wait list. Let me put this at two seats instead of just one. Say, okay. So the new thing here is the number of seats was not on this screen. So we've added that just in case for your event courses, especially where you've got that number of seats and wanting to see how many they're registered for. Uh, and it especially becomes important when you're wanting to unwaitlist them and you're, um, you've only got one seat left in the event and they're wanting two seats, well, they can't have both. So maybe you want to pick somebody that just wants one or wait until a second seat comes available. I don't know. However you process that. But anyway, um, that's the new thing here. Uh, okay, next thing is with, and this is all queries, but I'm going to show you with uh, Deadbeat, and that does not matter. Let me add some gibberish, add, and then add. In here, we had, uh, let's see if I've got, yeah, I've got firm name. Oh, I don't have the firm name from the firm. But we do have the firm name from names, and this used to just not, you couldn't tell which was which sometimes. And then other times, you know, we did add the ability to right click and it would tell you um, that it is the NM firm from name, well, from names. That's the key part. But um, I did something that would clean up every single one of these instances to say firm name, post, you know, and the, the parens names. Uh, that way you can uh, distinguish that. And then firm would be firm name, parentheses firm. Then the other thing is if I've got coordinator in here. Coordinator, um, we're finding bunch of databases out there where coordinator was something other than coordinator. So uh, we've went in and cleaned all those up to be coordinator across the board. Uh, so you can see that. Hopefully avoid confusion. Uh, okay. Out of here, cancel that, yes. Okay, so this one, Where's my, yes, this course. So I've got one person on the wait list, even though my minimum is five, or my maximum, sorry, my maximum is 20. So got, but I've got somebody on the wait list and this would work also if you've got 20 enrolled and people on the wait list. But anyway, it really just matters. You've got less, well, what was happening, what we were seeing happening is uh, you'd get 20 people registered, one person cancels, there's still somebody on the wait list, you haven't moved off of it, but then somebody else doesn't pay attention to the wait list and comes in and registers somebody for that last seat. Now that person on the wait list is still stuck on the wait list. But, um, so if I add a new registration, let me put, uh, let me see, Jenny. Yeah, Jenny's not. So when I go to save this, it's telling me, hey, there's currently registration on the wait list. Would you like to also wait list this as well? If I cancel it, it effectively abandons uh, the save. But if I say yes, it also wait lists the person. If I say no, it's going to register the person. So it's, uh, it's w whatever you're wanting to. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Because that's really, I think, the what you're going to want to do, waitlist the current registration and go to the other one 
and unwaitlist that person, which is Sam, and get him off the waitlist to enroll him. But this is just my example, my demo course. So really, I've got plenty of seats. I could put both of them in, but um, but yeah, that's uh, helping you guys out with a little extra leverage there. All right, since I'm on this course, I'm going to use it. Student list. Get web certificate is now on here and it is editable. So if I change this to Y, and it can be lowercase y, uppercase y, you can spell out yes, whatever you want to do. Y. Save and close, go back to the student list. Yes, they're getting the certificate. So, and apparently I've got a little issue where it doesn't show the full yes at all times. So I will fix that soon. But anyway, you get the point. You can set the get get web certificate if you are using the ACE Web Storm module to allow people to download um, certificates from ACEWeb. So another option there. <laughs> All right, this next one's kind of a biggie uh, for some of you folks, especially if you've got a lot of student manager um, users. And if I can do the right key combination, uh, what we've got is a set filter in, in the enrollment um, so you're looking at especially where you're running multiple departments in one student manager uh, or even coordinators if the coordinators just want to see their courses so must have Chuck set the filter so now I when I do look up active course I only see his course which apparently there's only one when I go to add a registration, George Bush, I don't think he's in it. Add registration. I only see that one course. Other routines would actually let me see it. Um, I want to abandon that. Uh, if you do the lookup all course, which is the lookup from the, the title bar here, or module courses, um, the the find regular course, not active, to find course, it will still show me all courses, but look up active is where it will just show the, whatever filter you've got set. So if I've got, and by the way, just to get out of the filter, you can do the clear filter, and then also the tools, um, the flag or uh, set filter, unset filter from from the toolbar um, or clear yeah tools and then there's ah let me just go to it tools data filters remove filter from courses will also clear the one that's set through f2 but anyway this is there this is separate than the filters up in the menu but um, maybe you're only wanting to see department ACEWARE systems. Set filter. And now I see just the two courses. By the way, this is also filtering out canceled. Um, if I, oh, and the range of dates. Um, I'd see more courses if I didn't do the range of dates. I go back here. By the way, even though I've got a filter, I don't have to clear the filter, just set a new filter. So if I say view all, no date range, and department ACEWARE systems, set filter. Now I'm going to see more courses. So you can do quite a bit of things with this. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing there's going to be lots of applications with this. Also, unlike other filters in the system, this filter is remembered uh, when you exit and come back into Student Manager. So you don't have to keep resetting it every day. This is this can be something that keeps going from day to day to day um, um, until you clear it or you set a different filter. 
Um, so that's uh, hopefully going to help a bunch of you guys out, um, and especially in your your uh, uh, you know the bigger schools, definitely where you're you're just doing your own stuff and you're not doing other things. Now, gonna, let queries me, queries I'm, are still going to be across the board. It is not going to filter queries. So, is there a question coming in? No, I well, uh, several people were asking about it, whether or not this would be a global feature or local, and that is um, local per user. So again, this right. is um, each staff member or groups of staff members can set up the filter uh, that is personal to them. So again, uh, uh, Christy, Martin, um, again, I'm trying to think, uh, Lynn, where you've got like Ollie programs as well as regular programs, or you might have staff, um, Lee College, where they have a senior citizen program, and then they have the regular workforce classes. Uh, again, it really allows your staff to zone in on a certain group of courses for look for the active lookup and for registration find. Um, but again, um, I, I just think you can use a heck out of it. Now, one other note, Matthew, is that in running reports, whether or not you have a filter on your lookup or not, any reports, any queries will be same, same, does not affect any reporting or lookups that you're doing. So uh, again, I, I, I have a PowerPoint on that that kind of tries to describe it. I may send that out to the group, uh, the listserv after this, so that if you wanted to take a look at it again, um, but uh, enjoy that. I, th I think that's gonna be a great feature. All right. Yes. Any other questions while we're having a break? By the way, to get to the enrollment report, you can also go module courses, enrollment report, or just F2 from your keyboard. But any other questions at the moment? I think Not we're good. The moment. Okay, great. All right. So next thing. Oh, let me let me clear the filter because I think I've got something coming up where I'm not going to want that filter. Ah. Okay. Reports. Um, da -da -da, certificates. Where am I finding certificates? All right, so we've had the email separately item. Uh, uh oh. This may not work. Well, it should. Um, it may come, come up and say I don't have the email module installed because this is my demo running off my laptop and not off my work computer. But anyway, uh, email separately. I'm just going to do default report and say OK. Um, course number begins with, let's pick my, this course. Okay, good. So what was happening, what was happening before now is it would not preview the certificate. So you would have no idea whether this was the right certificate or not. It was just going into this next part, which was send the certificates to these students now. And so you just had to kind of blindly trust and say yes. Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna cancel because eventually it's gonna tell me, hey, you don't have the email module installed. But, um, okay. Preview, oh, that also, that same preview is on the faculty reports or faculty contracts, I mean. So reports, faculty, um, contract agreements when you do the email separately from there. Coincidentally, this has always been on reports, invoices, run invoices, and doing email separately from there. So we've really just taken the same logic and applied it to these other two areas. Um, kind of overlooked the other two areas, really. So anyway, got it working all three places. Okay, courses taken. 
So if I go to names, um, who's got a bunch of courses? I think Chuck does. Quite hard of hearing, courses taken. We did not have seats. So notice Chuck has four seats down here in this bottom course, uh, which is his ACE visit. So he's bringing four people, including himself, to the annual Aceware reception. Um, so he, uh, this was not shown on this screen until now. Actually, that was in 85 that went out, so last month. So now I'm finally up to 86, which is this last build. Went out Monday. Uh, new thing, a couple of few new things. Two or three, two or three. Let's just run it under the catch-all. Uh, yeah. So the new things are zero workshop individual orphan records removed, zero workshop master orphan records. We are finding orphans in both workshop master and workshop individual tables, as well as duplicates in the master um, workshop master codes. So the tool now cleans up in the case of orphans, it goes ahead and just kills them. Um, it is, it's not like the orphan routine, the other orphan routine, I can't say routine, the other orphan routine where it saves the uh, orphans, uh, this goes ahead and just kills them. So usually it's bad data anyway, and it's probably the course has been deleted and somehow those, those workshop master and workshop individual um, pieces didn't get deleted with the course for for whatever reason so uh they 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 are bad ones so and of course this is a brand new demo i just downloaded it today and it uh, doesn't have any of those so uh location find so if i go find location the new thing is it's always had this internal ID showing in here, but now we're showing the room ID. If you are utilizing, it looks like in the demo, I don't, we don't have too many set up with a room ID, but if you are using that room ID, um, that this is now on the find screen and you can search for it. So if I start typing one, three, four, my Durland Hall 233 comes right up. So, okay. Next is instructor screen. And this is pretty big improvement. Let me bring up Chuck because he has the quite a bit. So if I do courses taught, and here it doesn't matter, all courses, past courses, upcoming courses, um, it's a little bit different, I think, past courses versus the all courses and upcoming courses, but I'm just going to show all courses. It's now got into a new screen, uh, similar to the um, the courses taken from uh, the name screen and the student list and wait list on the course screen is we've put it into, you know, the similar style. A uh, big thing is we can now print from here, which prints uh, some of the fields, not certainly not all of the fields. And by the way, that goes clear back here to payment and uh, and so quite a, quite a bit of information. Export to Excel actually brings. Actually, I'm going to just do it because it's going to bring in a bunch of stuff. Test to and I don't think that opened. Let me go find my whoops student manager demo test two. Okay, so it's got 
a lot more information than actually what the screen does. Um, this was everything that was um, that was av actually available, uh, but um, yeah, I have no filter, so I just was like, ah, oh, let's just put it all. So I, relatively new tool. See what you guys actually need, don't need. We can clean this up down the road. Evaluation stuff, if you keep track of evaluations, all that stuff uh, is getting exported. So export actually shows more than what's in the student manager screen. So for some of you, that's probably going to replace running a report, or at least I would hope. Um, so it saves you a little bit of time. Also, as right now, let me just do that again, all courses. The save and close and exit without saving both do the same thing right now because nothing is really editable. Oh, and you can double, double click on a course and it'll bring up that course. Uh, so similar to what the, the last screen did um, to really modernize the screen made it a little, you know, a couple new tools to it, made it a little more usable. But if we do decide to allow editing down the road, then the save and close and exit without saving are going to be utilized. But for now, right now, both do the same thing. So exit without saving uh, would, you know, just be safe. Well, actually, it doesn't matter, but okay. Uh, make sure I'm not skipping anything. Merging. Okay, so this instance, if I bring up firms, find firm. Kmart is dead. Well, it's going the way of the dodo bird. But if I'm putting in here some contact information, yeah, yeah, yeah something at something.com all right save okay and actually i could go from the tool inside there or if i go to tools uh data cleanup and firms refresh uh so if i want kmart to get merged in with my new vendor kinkos and so the second one i'm clicked even though I, so i've got both clicked but the second and i'm doing a control in between clicks second one is going to be the master if i hit replace what okay that'll be fixed this is this was working the other day. I know that's such a cliche answer, but uh, life of a programmer doing live presentations. Okay, ignore. This should still work, I think. Ignore. Wow, what the heck? Okay, if I go to Kinko's, find firm Kinko's, it brought in the contact to an email to from the dead um, Kmart. And actually it brought in federal ID and a few other things. But uh, anyway, main thing is every single point of data that is missing from the Kinko's record got pulled in from the Kmart. So if there was some information that uh, was worth saving, uh, it is now saving it. And um, apparently don't do it from the data cleanup quite yet. I'll have to uh, do some figuring as to what's causing that error. Um, and uh, fix that before it'll be usable from there. But you can also do the routine of copying the firm ID from from the good twin, pasting it over the bad twin, and then allowing it to combine 
that's going to work. That should work. Uh, let me see if I've got. Um, I don't care. It's a demo. Sam's Club. Sam's Club's taking over. Control V. Tab out. Yes, I want to move everything to Kinko's. Yes. There we go. Contact came in. Oh, well, it was already there. Um, so, yeah, if anything from Sam's Club was needing to be saved, it would have saved. But, okay. So do do the manual merge for now. I'll do another look at that data cleanup tool and see why it uh, it isn't working right. Um, maybe it 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 might be a data issue with this particular demo or something. But um, anyway, we'll get it corrected. All right, that's everything I've got. Chuck has another student manager feature to show. And Sharon, can you make him the presenter? It's on the Is way, Chuck. Fine cred. Okay. Well, I uh, uh, hang on. Uh, you, you're seeing my desktop. I need to <laughs> uh, shoot. Matthew, um, tell you what. Uh, Sharon. Do you want me to? Turn things over to Jason, Jump and I'm going to let Jason talk about I, what's new in AceWeb, and then we'll get back to you. How about that? Yeah, go ahead. All right, Jason. To, Thank you, Matthew, for all of those new goodies. You're getting a lot of applause, applause for your hard work these last three months. And Jason and Stein are going to update us on AceWeb now. Off to you, Jason. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Test, test. Well, I hope um, everyone is, is sheltering in place and, and doing well, stockpiled on your toilet paper and your food. And if you've got school age children like I do, your beer and your wine. Um, we're going to show you some, some new things that we've put in AceWeb recently that will hopefully help you as well as your staff members and your faculty uh, better be able to work from home in this uh, such an unprecedented time. So. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of just go through our, our list here of our features that we've released. But before we do that, I want to do a shameless plug for the Aceware forums. So if you haven't been to the forums before, this is where we post all of our updates for both Student Manager and Aceweb. So when a new release comes out, we make a post that has all the details about what went in, what bugs were fixed and things. And the cool thing about it is you can subscribe to these forums and you will get an email notification when one of those comes out. So if you are one of those people that likes to be on the bleeding cutting edge of the new builds, then definitely make sure you're subscribed to the forum and uh, you'll get those notifications sent right to your inbox. So as Sharon mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we are on build 57 for AceWeb. So 3.5 for your Fox Pro people and 4.057 for your SQL people. So we're gonna come into the form here and take a look. Now, first things first, we, we did change up the way that we are building these AceWeb update files with this release of 57. So we're no longer going to be having just the single aw step.zip file. It's now gonna go back to something that we used to do a long time ago, and that is to have a, an incremental build release and a full build release. And so what I mean by that is if you are updating from the previous build to the current build, so if you're on 56 right now and you want to update to 57, then the only thing you'll need is the aw35step.zip, or if you're on SQL, aw40step.zip. And the difference is, is that we're only including those new executable files where Stein has all the code and whatever files were updated or changed to go along with that particular executable. Um, in the past, we've kind of just been throwing all of the files that were recently updated, and by files I mean the templates, you know, DLLs, all those things. We were 
throwing all of those into that zip, but you didn't necessarily need to update those every single time you updated. So again, we're, we're switching it up and we're gonna have two different versions. So obviously you've got both your VFP and your SQL versions, but we're also gonna have the step or the incremental zip and then we're gonna have the actual full zip. Now the full is basically what the step zip was prior to this release. So it's gonna have all of the templates and files that have changed or been updated within around the last year or so. And so if you don't actually update every release and you maybe skip a couple, which is, is fine, you know, unless there's a critical update, it's fine to miss a couple of builds, but you'll wanna use that full update zip in those cases because the incremental one may not get you some of the files that you need to go from build to build. Okay, and you'll see the, um, the, the, the differences here when you go to the ACE Web Resources page where you download the zip file from, um, it's going to have the instructions right there. So it's, it's easy to tell which one you're gonna need. But if you do have questions, just get with your tech and they can walk you through it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about that, let me try this and make sure this is gonna work. Hopefully you can see the screen here. So um, again, just to kind of illustrate the difference, we've got two folders here and one is the AW35 full, one is the AW35 step. The full, which is what most of you are accustomed to, when you go into these folders, you'll see that it's got pretty much all of the files that have been updated recently. The step zip, on the other hand, is only gonna have the ones that have changed. So you can see right away in build 57, there are some new DLLs, some new framework files got updated and so those definitely have to be replaced with this build. But you definitely don't have the, the huge list of, of all the files that need to be replaced. And this is important for people that do lots of customizations to files that are not normally customized. Um, if, if you've got a lot of customizations like that, then the, the incremental zip is a much more concise way to say, okay, this is the only template that's being updated. I can compare that with mine, see if I do have any customizations and be able to more easily determine if you need to apply that uh, customization to the new file. Okay, let's get this back out of here. And then we'll just kind of go through the list. I know this webinar is kind of going pretty long, so I'm gonna kind of zip through a lot of these. Um, so first things first here, we added a added code to force the secure flag in the session ID cookies. So what this is saying is for those of you out there using secure socket layers, uh, if you've got the SSL certificate and your, um, your IT department or your security team is saying, hey, we need to make sure that the, uh, the session IDs or the cookies that are being sent out are set as secure. Well, we now support that in AceWeb and it's just a simple INI setting. Um, Again, you want to make sure that you are actually configured to use SSL on AceWeb or you're going to run into some other problems along the way. But if, you, if you've got your team asking about that, know that we do support that now. Next up is with the AW Viewer. Chuck, I think your mic might not be muted. I'm getting some feedback. All right, I'll mute. So AW Viewer, anyone not familiar with that? Let's go to our ASWEB administration page and we'll click this view button down here to take us to our AW viewer. So Stein has put in a lot of cool customizations to this, notably in the directory view. So if you were to select what folder you want to start from and then you put in DIR, you now have a directory view of whatever initial folder that you started with and you'll notice some new some new links here that you can click. You can actually navigate using the uh, links to the folders here. So you can go into the images folder or you can uh, go back up a folder. You'll see over here, we have the contents. So under this view column, you can see the contents. So let's pick a, actually, let's do something crazy. Go into the custom folder here and let's say you're working on a new data capture template and you kind of want to get a preview of, of what it's going to look like now obviously when you do this view the 
AceWeb coding that gets parsed out when the page is actually built by AceWeb is obviously not going to, to work when you're just viewing it as a web page. So you'll see some stuff like this, but for the HTML things, you know, the things that you're putting in a supplemental data capture or maybe an express registration page, those will actually render on the page and kind of give you an idea of how that's gonna look. Now let's say, well, I actually just wanted to see the actual contents of the file. If you click the view source, now you're getting that actual HTML view. So you can see everything from the start to the end of the file and uh, you can flip back and forth there. So that's pretty neat, uh, very handy, especially if you know, you're not wanting to, to risk going in with Template Manager just to view the source. This is a, a read-only format, so you can get a, a nice, easy view of a file or a preview um, without having to load it up in your browser you know, on your desktop or whatever. All right, so the other thing, going back to our viewer and doing the directory view is we have a new permissions column here. What this is gonna do is, honestly, this is gonna be mostly for troubleshooting purposes. If something isn't working correctly or you're getting an error and your tech needs to kind of diagnose and they say, well, we need to check permissions, um, in the past, for some of you, this has been difficult because getting access to the server to actually see those Windows-based file permissions can be kind of a, a process in itself. So we now have the ability to actually look at any file and see what permissions are on there. So we know that this is a file that's in the, the template folder, the ACE folder, so it needs to have iUser with read and execute access. And we can see here Rx corresponds to read and execute, so everything looks good. So this is a great troubleshooting tool that I think we're definitely going to get some use out of, make everyone's job a little bit easier. So thank you for that, Stein. Oh, Jason? Yes. Yeah, head back to the view page one more time. Uh, and the main the main view page. Yeah, uh, if you forget that it's a colon DIR, you can just click that, uh, hit the clear button, Jason. And now click the directory radio button. Yeah. Yep. Just in, uh, in in case you forget this special code, if you want to look at a directory, you can just hit that. So. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Next up on our list. Let's see. Did I miss anything else here? Uh, you can open viewable file types, a so text, HTML, all that, basically anything but images. If you want to look at the contents, just click that view link and you can see what that file is comprised of. It does support for archived courses to the STORM module, so for your online certificates and transcripts. Um, let's see if I can give a quick example, a little shout out to AW STORM. And, well, and I probably don't have the right password saved in here, so, well, okay, we're going to skip that preview. Actually, you know what? You know what we can do? We're going to cheat a little bit, and we're going to log in through Manager Web, so Staff Web Access. You can see I'm logged in as the Ace Web Tech account right now, which means I can look up a student and log them in without needing their password. Hey, hey, hey. So now I can actually go to the profile page and go to my history, which is where we have our certificates and our transcript links. And so if we do certificates, now I don't know if necessarily these are actually archived courses, but in the instance that they were, AceWeb can now look in the archives to see archived courses to get your transcripts and your certificates, mostly for transcripts, but yeah. You click your get certificate button and then you've got that nice certificate there that they can print out at home, or they can go to my transcript and get a beautiful transcript report that as you might know or might not know, you can design in the Student Manager Report Designer. So really cool feature there. Added a group list option, which blocks all courses from being displayed on a given interface. So what this is saying 
is with some of the more recent payment gateways, um, some customers have needed a way to have an alternate interface that is just for using a, the payment gateway through student manager payments. So a student manager needed its own separate ACE web installation that wasn't going to be displaying courses or allowing people to register, but just existed so that they could have a different payment gateway maybe from their main interface. So um, this is kind of just an enhancement to that existing group list option, which is for alternate interfaces to where you can specify this interface should only show this group of courses and this one should only show this, or you can include on this one and exclude on that one um, or, or a combination of all those settings. So um, handy feature there. This release will include a new admin.aspx file, which will enhance security by requiring Windows authorization to access the page. This is the one that Stein is, I know, probably the most excited about. And then all of the rest of us techs are also really excited about this too. And I wanted to show this off because I think it's just awesome. When we're talking about security and ways into your server or into your system that have your IT people biting their nails, the big one is the admin.aspx page. And so I kind of set up an example of how this actually works. Once you update to 57, without needing to do anything else, if you try and access your web connection, um, your web connect administration page, one that normally has, you know, your ISAPI settings where you can unload and reload your comm servers, you know, you can restart the machine, you can restart IIS, you can do a lot of dangerous things from this page. If you try and access that in IIS, is configured to allow anonymous access to that page, it's simply not going to allow it to work. This is independent of the setting in your WCINI that says, well, I wanna specify an account so that anytime anyone tries to run something from this page, they have to authenticate with that account. Right now, my test environment is configured that way. So I still can't even get to the point where it would offer up an actual challenge to put in that account information, it's basically saying, I'm sorry, but you are you have it configured to allow anonymous access, so we're gonna completely block this. So if you get this message, it's a good thing, but what it means is you need to actually get with your IT guys, or if you have access to your server, you need to go in there and you need to disable anonymous authentication. Now that's obviously going to take an IIS reset, We'll let that reset real quick. And now if we go back to our page and we refresh, here it is prompting us for that actual uh, server authentication account. Now I don't have the account um, memorized because it's a really long password, but uh, this is where you would put in whatever account you have specified in your WCINI or if you're on .NET in your web config file. Um, and that would then take you to the, the the Web Connect maintenance page, which has your access to your comm servers and all those dangerous things. So really cool enhancement there that's, that's definitely got a lot of us excited. So yeah. thank you, Stein, for that. Yeah. And I'll just say that generally that page is not something that you want to go into anyhow, unless we've got some problem and you're working with your tech and... Uh, we need to get behind the scenes to try to, to mm -hmm. debug stuff, but that's not, so it's just, it's it's made things secure and probably not affected your life in any way because you didn't want to really want to go there anyhow on your own, so. Let's see if this works, okay, good. So I guess I can show you this now. So this would be the page after you've authenticated with that Windows uh, account, then you can get to your actual page and see all these these horribly dangerous features that you don't want you know, the public having access to or even having the ability to brute, try and brute force a password. Because again, if it's allowing anonymous access, that's basically an open door saying, hey, just keep trying stuff until you get it. And you definitely don't want that, so. Okay, so that was our yeah, new SPX. Next one, this is kind of one of the, the cooler things that went in is the enhanced access to the instructor related features for using staff web access or manager web. 
So in the past, if you were as a staff member and you the instructor lookup option, uh, right away it would try and load every single course um, that was basically active and met the criteria in your database. And for some of you, that meant hitting a certain limit, which a JavaScript limiting. There are so many records. I'm trying to build this table, and there's just too many, and so it would break, and your page would be completely foobarred. And so there's a couple of things that we've done. We prevented it from auto-loading that list, and we've also actually increased that amount for instances where you do need to see an actual complete list of all of the active courses um, that are meeting that, meeting that criteria in your database. So we did increase that limit, but the main thing is it's not trying to load that right when you click that link. So the the uh, privileges are going to be the same. You need to have that level five in the ACE Web Access uh, area of password maintenance for your staff members. And let's see, let me show you some of these new options for this. So we're going to click our link to get back to our manager web here. Hopefully I didn't anger the server gods messing around with IIS. There we go. All right, we're gonna log off of the student account I was logged on to. And let's say you just log into Manager Web. This is gonna be the screen that you would see. And in the past, when you click this lookup course view roster instruction link is where it would have preloaded all of those different courses. So now you can see there's a couple new options here. We've still got all of our filters to select for inactive courses, uh, to include the gradebook links if you're gonna be allowing gradebook access to your staff. And then you've got two options here, which is show all instructors. Again, this is gonna load that entire list. And then you've got this one, which says show it for the selected instructor. And you click the drop down list, choose whichever instructor you're gonna be using. I think Chuck has some gradebook stuff. And then I'm just gonna throw this in there so we get a decent amount of courses here. And you can see now we do have this nested scrolling. So it's not like your page is gonna be, you know, four miles long. You do have the, the nested scroll here, which is really handy. Um, and again, same options as before. You've got your option to pull up your roster. You've got the, and workshop rosters as well. You can see course details. So again, with staff web access, you do get to see more information than just an instructor logging in and viewing course details. You get to see in information about the fees, um, the number of people enrolled in the class, who's canceled, things like that. And then again, same options as usual, printing, saving it to Excel, doing an attendance sheet printout, or if you needed to email those uh, students, you can do that right from your browser. The one caveat there, again, is that is using whatever local email client you have. This doesn't send through AceWeb. This sends, this just creates a mail to link. Like if you were to click an email address on any other page, it's doing that, but it's doing it for all of the students in that class. So it's getting back to our list here. Um, what I'm gonna do actually first is go back one more. And we're gonna say, let's, let's say we chose the all instructors option and we hit get courses. So we've got our huge list of courses here. And you can see down here, it still has the gradebook option, but we haven't selected any instructor. Technically, we're looking at all instructors. So if you tried to click this gradebook link, even though uh, we have the right access level and gradebook is enabled for that particular class, it's gonna tell us right away um, something didn't work and it could be because you're not selecting a specific instructor that you wanna edit the gradebook as. And so what you need to do then is go back and choose the option to select a particular instructor. So again, we're gonna say, there we go. So now I'm, I am selecting the instructor, Jason Allen. And now when I click that gradebook link, you can see that we've got access to edit our grades, hours, and credits. Now, another thing that is farther down on the list, but I'll go ahead and mention since we're here, Stein at the last minute did put in the ability to add CEUs to this gradebook access. So if you do have instructors, or in this case, staff members logging in as instructors, 
and they want to edit CEUs from Manager Web, then just get with your technician and we can give you the changes to make to your template to allow that sort of access. So we save our changes there and that is that. Okay, how are we doing? Any questions so far? Are we still doing pretty good there? You are doing good. All right, so let's see if we missed anything on that one. Staff members, sufficient privileges. Yeah, yeah, looks good. Next up, modified how the HTTP request page is generated when submitting a payment to the Elevon or Converge payment service. So any of you that use Elevon slash Converge, make sure you get with your technician. And when you update to 57, you're gonna to wanna to also have that new Elevon template sent to you so you can make sure that you're um, using the, the latest version of that. Stein, did you have any details you wanted to add about that? Or is that just, just that, kind of that, just a... That one, of, one of our customers uh, did point out that the, the current, the, the legacy Elevon access had, uh, you know, it was uh, a pretty uh, it, uh, obscure, a security link, but the people who try to hack in are good at finding those things. So it it, it was a way that somebody could have possibly uh, intercepted your Elevon customer codes, and we don't want that. So uh, this uh, new new setup should uh, prevent that possible security uh, breach. Good stuff. All right, and then, like I said, the last one there we, we did talk about with editing the C CEUs. Uh, the one before that is added ACH and transaction fee support for the cash net payment service. This is one that Matthew got in. It's basically allowing the the e-checks e to be used for cash net, and then it also supports a transaction fee, which um, I'm assuming is just a way to tack on a fee, a required fee for every transaction Matthew, anything that you want to add to that? No, um, it just it, it's like the other modules that use transaction fees. You've got the the special setup, which I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but it it, it I know it sets you have to use the transaction fee course, and then there's a uh, I think it's an AWSIS INI setting. So put those in, and and it'll start. Um, recording those those transaction feeds with the, awesome. the payment. Good stuff. All right, so yeah, if you've got the Cash Net Payment Gateway and you want to explore some of those options, get with your tech and they can help you get those sorted out. And with that, that is the last of our features. Um, we're not gonna cover the fixes. I know that we're, we're going pretty long today, but if you do wanna look at the list of the fixes, fixes be sure to head to our forum and make sure you subscribe to that and you'll get the complete details there. Thanks everybody. Okay, thanks Jason, lots of good stuff, lots of applause. We know that we have entered into um, taking some extra time today and so Chuck said that he would cover, he had something in fine credentials and he said you could shoot him an email if you want information on that or you can join us next week on the 15th at 3 for the second in our series of spring training. We have 80 fantastic new learners that are coming along with us and watching webinars and doing sessions. So certainly join us and he said he would review that uh, fine credential feature in there or you can shoot him an email. And so we're going to close and thank you for hanging in there with us for this um, longer webinar. Lots of good stuff. We wish you a good afternoon and enjoy the upcoming weekend and stay safe everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.